Welcome to the Washington Council for High School College Relations Virtual College Planning Day. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use that Q&A feature to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off so we cannot see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions that we're offering, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you'll have access to that recording within about a week or so. With that said, I wanna go ahead and introduce our first presenter from Eastern Washington University. Thanks, Jasmine, I appreciate it. I'll go ahead and start sharing here. Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for <clears throat> joining us today. I know it's a pretty busy time for everybody. So I think I speak for all the counselors here that we really appreciate you taking some time and um, joining us today. Um, so just a little bit about myself before I start the presentation. Um, my name is Jennifer Ness and I'm an assistant director of recruitment for Eastern Washington University. And I've worked here for about seven years now. I've got my bachelor's from here, so I'm a proud alumna. And I definitely feel a connection with Eastern, um, not to mention you know, the region that we're in. And I've lived in a lot of different places and I always end up returning here. And so hopefully through the presentation, you will see why. Um, what you see here in front of you is our online lookbook. And I would just recommend if you want just grabbing this uh, URL, the ewu.edu slash lookbook, and you can access this at any time um, you want. And it will be updated throughout the year with um, new information. And it also will link out to some important stuff as well. So feel free to um, bookmark that for future reference. So just to give you a little overview, if you don't know thing, anything about Eastern is uh, we are located, um, surprise, surprise, in the eastern part of the state. Uh, so we're about an hour drive or so from the Idaho border in a small college town called Cheney. And if you don't know anything about Cheney, that's perfectly fine. Um, we are located about 25 minutes outside of Spokane. And then um, ter in terms of other places, we're about four and a half hour drive or so from Seattle, two hours from Tri-Cities and about a three hour um, drive from Yakima. We're a medium-sized uh, four-year public institution uh, with about 12,000 total students, and that includes our master's level students. And if you're counting, um, we have about 2,000 total squirrels as well. Uh, so something that really sets Eastern apart, um, we definitely pride ourselves in our commitment to community and to the Eastern community, and just in making sure that you as a student are gonna be successful during your time here. So anyone that you, you know, run across who works at Eastern um, is really invested in making sure that you're you know, doing well, both inside the classroom as well as outside. And what ends up happening with this is um, you'll feel a true sense of family and community. And that's something that I hear you know, over and over from our current students as well as our, our alumni. You know, Eastern really felt like a second home for people. And because of that, uh, they were able to succeed during their time here. In terms of programs, Eastern has more than 100 programs for you to choose from. We have a little bit of everything. And while all of our programs are great, I just wanted to highlight um, a couple of them for you today. Uh, one actually really unique major is our forensic science major. Uh, the program is pretty special because it's connected with the Washington State Patrol Crime Lab, which is located um, basically across the street from campus. And if you don't know what the Washington um, State Patrol Crime Lab is, basically any crime that's committed within the jurisdiction of the Washington State Patrol, the evidence for that crime is sent to this lab to be analyzed. So our students in this program are able to get that hands-on experience working on real forensics and real crimes so really getting, kind of giving them that edge in the job market. Also, um, you know, all of our majors in the business school, including uh, majors like, you know, supply chain management, 
data analytics, marketing, and so on, um, very, are all AAC SC accredited. And what that means is our students are enrolled in one of the top five percentage of business schools in the world. And as a result, they tend to receive, you know, better salaries once they start working. Um, they have employers reach out to them, you know, pretty early on. Um, and just in general, they perform better in and outside of the classroom than in schools who don't have this type of accreditation. So you can kind of see here our top five majors. Um, business is one of them, but we're also um, pretty strong with our health sciences and STEM fields. <clears throat> in terms of location, I kind of touched on it a little bit, but we're pretty ideally located. We're rural and urban at the same time. And you'll get your college experience in an all-American college town that's basically just down the road from busy city life. So really the best of both worlds. And that's really one, one thing that I just love about living here is you know, that kind of balance that you get. Uh, the same time that it will take you to get to, let's say, I don't know, your favorite ski spot or your favorite lake, it'll take you the same time to get to your favorite coffee shop. So just depending on your mood for that day, um, you'll have lots of options. And then even if you don't have a car, which is pretty normal for a college student, um, there are a lot of options for you. So um, first of all, your student ID card is also gonna couple as your bus pass, and that's free for you as a student. So you can get you know, all around Cheney, all around Spokane, back and forth between the two, and to your favorite you know, outdoor spot, like hiking spot pretty easily using the bus system. <clears throat> or if you wanted something a little bit more adventurous, we have a pretty unique program award-winning program that um, plans outdoor excursions at super low cost to students. So you can go, you know, like whitewater rafting or ice climbing, um, or my personal favorite, dog sledding, um, with a group of students who are just as adventurous as you. So Eastern and Cheney and just this area in general is really safe, um, really safe and welcoming community, both on campus and off campus. So it's really easy to connect and to meet people. And speaking of being on campus, you know, whether you're into sports, sororities and fraternities, or maybe even gaming, uh, something else, um, there's gonna be lots of different ways to meet friends and, and meet people who are into the same things as you. So in addition to our almost 200, last time I checked student clubs and organizations, we have an award-winning uh, recreation center, complete with an ice rink, um, this climbing wall that you see here, and also uh, a huge gym, one of the biggest gyms I've seen. Um, we also have a brand new uh, student union building, which you can see here, it's kind of the center of everything. Um, we have loads of student services to offer, including a you know, multicultural center, career center, prize center, um, disability support services, and so on and so forth. So there is a lot going on. Okay, so this, another cool thing that I'm actually really excited to talk about is um, this, we just opened up this brand new state-of-the-art building. It's called the Catalyst Building, and it's in um, downtown Spokane. It's um, part of the university district there. And the cool part and I'm sure you're wondering like why on earth is this lady showing you this building, like who cares? But basically this building has an energy footprint of zero. So I think it's pretty special um, and that makes it one of the most sustainable buildings in the whole country. So I don't know if you can see like the sol solar panels up here, um, but we're really proud to be a part of this project and um, this building will actually, or it currently is, you know, home to several other programs, including some of those top five programs you saw earlier, uh, like business and computer science, you know, public health and electrical engineering, and there's some others as well. So if those are um, fields that you're going into, this is where you get to study. Pretty, pretty neat place. I wanted to also talk about cost, um, because I imagine that's pretty important for you when you're looking for for college. Um, for you as Washington residents, Eastern is going to be the most affordable school of Washington public universities um, with a total tuition rate, as you can see here, of about $7,500. So 
So then in, in addition to any you know, finan financial aid you might receive, um, we offer a number of scholarships. Some of them are automatic, some you know, require a separate application. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're um, going through this process. Um, the priority deadline always for us for both admission and for scholarships is February 1st. So again, just keep that in mind as you are applying. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about sort of like next steps for you now that you know a little bit more about Eastern's community cost and programs. Um, so you can apply if you want, but um, just so you know, our fall 22 application does not open up until August 1. Um, so again, bookmark this page because we'll update that once, um, once it rolls out in August. Uh, you can also explore the different majors here. Um, I just wanted to show what our Explorer tool looks like real fast. So if you go in here and I usually use the filter option, but let's say you're not sure which business degree you want to do, but you know you want to do business. You just click on the College of Business over here. It'll show all the programs. And then once you actually click, you can learn a little bit more. It'll go more into depth. You can see, you know, um, an example of the class that might be taking place or each degree underneath. Um, so definitely explore there. But the thing that I would recommend that you do um, more than anything would be to take a virtual tour or an in-person tour. We've actually just reopened up for in-person tours, which I'm very excited about. Um, and that will really allow you to get a good feel as to whether or not Eastern is a good fit for you. Hopefully we will be. Um, but basically, if you have any questions at all, please go ahead and drop them in the q and A. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I also hope to see you here at Eastern next fall. Um, thanks again for your time and go eat. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brittany Jackson, and I am an assistant director of admission at the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma, Washington. I'm so excited to be here with you all this morning and talk a bit more about UPS, who we are as an institution, um, and also what it could look like for you to attend the University of Puget Sound and the steps in that whole process. Um, so First and foremost, um, I want to also add a couple more uh, identifiers about myself. I work with students in the city of Seattle, South King County, um, and Tacoma proper. I also work with a handful of students in San Francisco and Oakland um, because the University of Puget Sound is one of the um, few schools, few small schools in the state um, that is a national campus in addition to being an independent residential liberal arts university. So all of those different identifiers put us in a very specific category. Um, so first we are a national institution. Just about 80% of our student body, which is about a 2,400 undergraduate um, student body, comes from other parts of the country. If we don't have all 50 states represented in our student body, we have about 47 of them at one time. Um, so we are a national campus. Um, and also we are an independent campus, particularly for small schools that does make us unique, um, which basically means that we are not a faith based campus. So your faith and your religions are welcome on campus, you're welcome to practice them. Um, faith is just not required of the curriculum, right? So we are a national, independent, uh, residential small school as well too. And um, we do require that all of our students live on campus for their first two years, um, that they are with us. We are very much intentionally trying to create a small, intensive, intellectual bubble where you are around other students and you're living and learning and that process can happen in more of um in more of a way that's in combination with each other right you're constantly living and learning and it happens in this cyclical way um so we are we are residential um and we are also independent we are also national and probably the most important part of our title is that we are liberal arts I don't know about you all, but when I was in high school and someone said liberal arts, I truly did not know what they meant. Um, and I oftentimes find that when you ask someone what liberal arts means, they give you a definition that's far more complex than, than, what, than what is actually needed and then ends up leaving you more confused. So I like to think about the liberal arts as essentially, we care a whole lot about how you think, as opposed to what you think. We spend a whole lot of time talking about what is going to get 
students to engage in their critical thinking, right? So trying to develop that thinking process where when information comes in, you can just vet things and you can decide for yourself what that pathway and what the proper pathway forward is, right? That critical thinking process. We don't really care what you think, we really care how you think. Um, and we fundamentally believe that the only way someone can develop a critical thinking process and can develop a strong way of thinking, right, a process for thinking, is if they have access to as many areas of study as possible. So yes, we love general ed requirements. We love them so much. <laughs> um, we have a core curriculum, which I can dive into a little bit later, um, and all kinds of accoutrement for, um, for you and other students. But um, that's because we want to make sure that we do not pigeonhole students too quickly. Actually, at the University of Puget Sound, because we are um, a liberal arts institution and we really care about your critical thinking process, we give students until the end of their sophomore year to decide and to confirm their major. So if you come in undecided, that's great. If you come in with an idea of a major and you're like really passionate about it, and then you get into those classes and you don't like it, that's also fine. You can still switch your major or maybe you do like the major that you selected, but it would be even better with a minor. All of those decisions do not happen all at once and they don't happen in a vacuum. They happen over time. They happen when you expose yourself to other people. And that's why we need to give students as much time as possible to actually make that decision, right? And develop that critical thinking process. Um, so that is us in a nutshell, right? We are independent, we are residential, we are national, we are liberal arts, we are all of these things. Uh, we are also located, one thing that's really unique about us is that we are located in Tacoma, Washington. Um, I like to think of Tacoma, Washington as kind of like a Goldilocks city. Um, I remember talking to a, a colleague of mine that works at another school and they were like, what's it like to work at an urban liberal arts campus? And I was like, are we? Um, because, because yes, it's Tacoma, um, the third largest city in Washington state. Um, yes, so there's public transit and all the things that you would expect from, um, from a city, but also Tacoma has a bit of a slower pace to it, right? You're looking at around 200,000 people. Again, we're not the largest, we're not the second largest, but we are the third largest, right? So we're in this kind of middle ground as, as cities. So um, if you want to have access to great outdoors, which is also why a lot of students um, do decide to engage in Puget Sound and decide to come here. Tacoma is a perfect portal for all of that, whether it's ferry rides off of Vashon um, or a 15 minute drive from Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium, or um, at this point, this far south, um, you're about a two and a half hour drive from Portland, which is what a lot of our students do. They like to go to Portland over the weekends. Um, so Tacoma puts you in this wonderful like sweet spot of the whole entire I-5 corridor. Um, and we are very, very proud to be located in Tacoma and talk a whole lot about what that means, particularly in the context of being a national school, right? Um, there aren't a lot of schools that are like Puget Sound on the West Coast. Um, if you took Puget Sound and dropped us in the middle of Pennsylvania, we would be a dime a dozen. Um, and so what we're trying to do on campus and making sure that students are developing those critical thinking processes in very small classroom environments um, is something that we take a lot of pride in, right? Um, quick facts, our average class size is um, our average class size is around 15 students with a student to faculty ratio of 11 to 1. So the largest class that you can ever expect to be in in your freshman year would be about 35 students. Um, and then the smallest, uh, some students can experience a class of four or five people by the time you're a senior and you're in your seminar courses and you're doing research. Um, and by the way, research becomes so much more fun when you get to decide what you research, right? It's not just someone telling you what to research, you're the one coming up with these questions, right? So, and you wanna do that in a small intensive environment with other people and you're building off of their ideas. That is absolutely the kind of educational environment we seek to create every single day. Um, and so outside of kind of the academic experience um, and also part of the reason why we re require students live on campus. Um, and even in COVID, we do have about 900 students in residence, um, safely distanced. Because we, because we require that, um, that also means that we have to have a student life experience that is as robust enough to support that kind of living and learning experience that we want our students to have. And so when it comes to student life, um, we also have what, 23 varsity uh, sports as well too, and, and varsity athletics. We are division three, so we do not offer athletic scholarships. We are a little bit too small. Um, but at the same time, actually our coaches are great partners with us in, in, our, in our recruiting work here in the Office of Mission because we oftentimes find that um, the student athletes that we attract at the University of Puget Sound are there because they love their sport and they love their team and they love competing. Um, and then actually on the division three level, it is incredibly competitive. Um, so if you're talking to one of our coaches, if you have a chance to connect with one of them, um, please let us know. They're probably going to bring you over to the Office of Admission, and we definitely work very closely with them. 
so athletics, um, but also the great outdoors, right? As I mentioned earlier, Tacoma is a portal to the rest of the Pacific Northwest for a lot of our students, particularly if they're coming from out of state. And so our largest student group on campus is actually Puget Sound Outdoors, um, in addition to lots of identity-based clubs. Um, the multi-identity-based student union is engaged in a lot of very critical activist work on campus. So if you are interested in organizing, if you are interested in social justice, that is absolutely happening on our campus. Very real conversations that are grounded in right now, even for the intellectual bubble that we very intentionally try to create, um, still come through in these conversations. And so if you are interested in athletics or music, that's another huge through line to our student life experience or organizing or activism. Um, all these things are happening on campus, um, in addition to Greek life, which does also make us unique as a small school, having a Greek system. Um, so I don't want to belabor the point, um, whether it's academics or it's student life, there's a lot that's happening in a very small campus. <laughs> um, so definitely ask us more about that. I can drop my information into the chat box. Um, but I also want to talk a bit more about the application process in the last couple minutes that I have with you, um, because we are a proud member of the Common App. That is the only place that you can find our, our freshman application or our transfer application. Um, and as a member of the Common App, we are one of those schools that requires a big college essay, um, which if you have more questions about, please send them to me. I love talking about and unpacking what this personal statement is and the college essay and even the entire nuts and bolts of the Common App process because it's a lot to go through. So. Um, being as mindful as possible in that process takes a lot of work and that is also what my colleagues and I are here to support you through. Um, but also to totally get to the elephant in the room, we are a private institution, which means that our sticker price is no joke. Our sticker price is probably the second highest in the state. It is no joke. Um, that said, because we are a private institution and we do charge the same rate for students that are in state and out of state, that means we have to show up with the scholarship money, right? We have to be serious about how we support our students and be as mindful as possible with financial aid so that we can still make sure this type of education is accessible. Um, and so most students, most students that apply will actually have half of the total cost of attendance met with simply the scholarships they earn from sending us their application. Um, every student that applies to the University of Puget Sound, if you are admitted, you are getting a merit scholarship. It's not a matter of if you get money, it's more a matter of how much. Our merit scholarships start at 15,000 and they cap actually at $26,000. Um, and you can still earn more money from there. If you come in with a 3.6 cumulative unweighted GPA, you can also, uh, you're eligible to, learn, to earn more money um, in that scholarship process. So, um, if you have more questions about our academics, student life, our location, um, or even just questions about, or, or even some questions and, and, and comments that you have about a private school and applying to a private school and what that actually means, I'm definitely here as a resource. Um, I'll be able to drop my um, email in the chat. Um, my name is Brittany and thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Hi, you guys. Welcome. And again, thank you everyone for being here this morning. My name is Marcy Alstrom. I'm the recruitment and admissions manager at Grays Harbor College. I'm going to get set up with my screen sharing here and then we'll get started. All right. So um, yeah, welcome again, everyone. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Marcy Alstrom. I'm the Recruitment and Admissions Manager at Grace Harbor College. Uh, Grace Harbor College is a community and technical college located in Aberdeen, Washington. That's where our main campus is. Uh, we also have locations in Raymond and El Waco. So we are one of Washington's 34 community and technical colleges. We primarily serve Grace Harbor and Pacific County, which is in Western Washington. We're about an hour southwest of Olympia. Olympia here, about an hour um, west of Centralia Chehalis if you're going to our Raymond campus, and then much further south if you're visiting Iwako. Um, Grace Harbor College is celebrating our 90th year, and this year we were founded in 1930. Um, so we've been serving Grace Harbor and Pacific Counties for a long, long time. We're um, really, really proud um, to serve our region and uh, love, love the area that we're in. 
Um, our Aberdeen campus is a beautiful 40 acre campus um, on a bit of a, a mountain cliff. I like to jokingly say um, we're on a steep hill. Um, so the difference between lower campus and upper campus, as you can see here um, on the picture for Aberdeen campus, um, one of our many stairways to upper campus, this one is called um, Heart Attack Hill, and then we are also have Cardiac Lane. Um, don't worry though, we have parking on upper campus as well. So you don't have to take the stairs, but um, it's a really great workout if you'd like to every day. So a little bit about Grays Harbor College, who we are, like I mentioned, we're one of 34 community and technical colleges in Washington state. We offer a variety of different academic programs. Um, so really, no matter where you're at in your academic journey, Grays Harbor College has something for you. We do offer short term certificates and high school diplomas for folks either just getting started in their education um, or, you know, wanting to just get that short term certification. Um, for our associate degrees, we have a combination of both transfer degrees and workforce degrees. Really, the difference there is our transfer degrees are a great fit for students who um, really want to get the foundational two-year associate degree before transferring on to a university to go on for their bachelor's. And our workforce degrees are more community and technical programs uh, that are focused on students getting the hands-on experience that they need before stepping right into a career afterwards. We also have a number of Bachelor of Applied Science degrees, three to be, to be specific. We have a Bachelor of Applied Science program in Forest Resource Management, Organizational Management, and Teacher Education. So if you want to get your kindergarten through eighth grade teaching certification at GHC, we have that program. We are one of the smallest community and technical colleges in Washington State. Uh, starting fall of this year, um, we had just over 3,000 unique students, um, which means that we have a really small class size. So our student to fa faculty ratio is about 18 to 1. Um, that means those small class sizes that you're going to engage in at GHC are a great opportunity for you to build meaningful relationships with staff and faculty um, that can lead to mentorship opportunities and and um, really help to expose students to opportunities outside of the classroom as well that will help to supplement their in-classroom learning. So let's watch this uh, great video from Washington's Community and Technical College system to learn a little bit about um, the Community and Technical Colleges around Washington State and really our goals for serving our communities. Building a stronger Washington will take all of us Community and technical colleges were built for times like these. We know our communities and we're responding. Our doors are wide open to diverse students of all ages, races, and backgrounds to train for a job, get a degree, or start a new career. To create a strong and inclusive economy, it's the right thing to do. For students, for employers, for Washington. Washington's community and technical colleges. Awesome. So um, why choose Grace Harbor College? You know, first and foremost, when you start at Grace Harbor College, or if you finish your degree with us, you're going to get a really high quality education. Like I said, Grace Harbor College has been around for 90 years serving Western Washington. Um, many of our, our programs are really built and meant to serve the local economic needs. So I mentioned that Bachelor of Applied Science and for Forest Resource Management. We know um, that forestry and logging and really natural resource management is a big part of Western Washington's economy. Um, so you can expect that the education you get at GHC is a really high quality and that, it, you know, you're going to be getting an education that um, is going to meet the economic and labor needs of, of Western Washington. I mentioned also the value of small class sizes that you'll get at GHC. And also Grace Harbor College is a really affordable cost. Um, I'm sure as many of you know, starting your education at a community or a technical college is a really, really great way to ensure that, um, you know, the education that you're getting, especially higher education is uh, affordable, it, whether your plans are to transfer on to a university um, or to, like I mentioned, finish your degree with us and then go on to the workforce. Um, Community and technical colleges are a great way to ensure um, a really high value for that education. And of course, we're conveniently located in Aberdeen, Raymond, and Waco and online. 
So, you know, what can you, what kinds of programs can you expect to find at Grace Harbor College? We have several different kinds of programs. Um, here, you know, I did mention we have high school completion, certificates, transfer degrees, workforce, and, and of course, a few bachelor's programs. Um, but really, it's, it's best for students to explore what are your interests? Um, what kind of area of or study or college and career cluster are you interested in? And so you can look at our areas of study and maybe find a program that's of interest to you. We have arts and humanities, education, business, career and technical education. A few of our more hands-on programs include automotive, carpentry, um, diesel technology, and welding. Um, of course, our nursing program and medical assisting are also really hands-on. Uh, we have a few other allied health profession degrees and science technology and engineering and that Bachelor of Applied Science and Forest Resource Management falls under STEM as well. So um, at Grace Harbor College, we have really a family culture, a family environment. Lots of student support services at our college. Um, our, our faculty and our staff are here to help make sure that students are successful both inside and outside of the classroom. So uh, you can find in our student support center um, services like the Running Start Center, uh, veteran services, disability supports. And we have a really engaging student life on campus. Uh, our Diversity and Equity Center is a great way for students to get involved uh, in clubs and student government. Um, and of course, we also have the Bishop Center for Performing Arts, which we'll look at in just a few minutes, where students can be involved in plays, musicals, uh, musical performances as well. Our academic support building is home to our the John Spillman Library, the Writing Center, Learning Center, Reference Desk, and TRIO student support programs. Um, like I said, not only is GHC committed to making sure that students are successful inside the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well. And so those, those holistic student support services um, to help students, you know, either supplement their education in the classroom or get a little bit of extra support with their learning is really important to us at GHC. Our athletic program at GHC is a lot of fun. Um, we have both men's and women's teams in basketball, baseball, softball, golf, and wrestling. We also have a women's uh, soccer team and cross country team as well. Um, our Brewster Athletic Complex is a really fun place for a lot of different students um, and a really great place to, to get involved on campus. So we'll kind of just take a look at a few other pictures on campus here. We have our um, Shermer Instructional Building, which is home to a lot of our um, science and um, natural resources classes. Um, here's a look at our carpentry program. Um, like I mentioned, we have automotive, diesel. Um, our music program is really exciting. Um, and here's a, a little look at what we have going on at the, at the Bishop Center for Performing Arts, which is really a cultural hub for Aberdeen. So what are the next steps you can take? Of course, applying to Grace Harbor College, completing those financial aid applications is a really important step. Our priority application deadline for this next year, 2021-2022, is May 1st. So if you're a senior, make sure you get that FAFSA or WAFSA completed here in the next week. And then our entry registration opens up in late May for new students. So thank you all for your time today. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you to our amazing presenters. With that said, this concludes our virtual college fair for today, but I have a few closing announcements. One, I want to share that as you exit this Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions, but please complete the survey. It's extremely useful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. Also wanna remind you that you can sign up for additional sessions by visiting our registration site. And finally, a recording will be available within about a week or so. With that said, I wanna thank our amazing presenters for joining us, but I also wanna thank all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.